Ah, James K. Polk, a small man with very big ideas for the United States. He believed in manifest destiny, which meant trying to expand land for the United States. And all of that does sound pretty groovy at first. But then you meet a guy like me who's gonna have like so many other opinions. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit more today. So cue the intro. Hello again, welcome to another episode of The President Wiz. Today we are going to be discussing the presidency and the legacy, the highly controversial legacy of James K. Polk, the 11th President of the United States. You're in for a real treat because this could get messy. So James K. Polk was kind of your typical white guy trying to run for president in the 1840s because John Tyler, he kind of fell off the face of the earth after a while when he was president. Nobody really liked him anymore now. He was kind of dead to everybody, so it seems obvious why they would want to elect like a Democrat. Someone who believes in Manifest Destiny sort of captures the image of like an Andrew Jackson almost, which, you know, people liked at the time because, you know, Andrew Jackson was big on what they believed because the only voters were white males. Yay! Our country is awful. Anyway, the fact was that James K. Polk had so many big ideas, but nobody knew who the f*** he was. In fact, the Whigs' campaign slogan in the election of 1844 was, Who is James K. Polk? Um, Henry Clay was actually running against James K. Polk, and Polk wasn't even, like, the first choice for the Democratic nominee. At first, Martin Van Buren wanted to run again, um, but he didn't get renominated. And then in 1848 later, he ran again for the election, but not on the Democratic Party this time. He ran as the free soil candidate, a bit of a more abolitionist approach to president instead of democratic. Keep in mind, back then, Democrats were more conservative. Nevertheless, he did terribly. He came in last. Anyway, James K. Polk, he gets elected in a really close election, actually. Then he goes on, and he promised Americans one thing. He was going to be the hardest working president in American history. He was going to do so much for the United States, and he really did have big ideas. He was very intellectual, and I'll give him that. And he said he was only gonna serve one term. He had no interest in running again. And he said, I'm gonna do so much in these four years, and I'm going to be the best president you guys have ever had. And people believed him. So then, he goes into office, he's, he stands by his word. Every evening, he's still working, he has gas lights installed in the White House so that he can see what he's doing. He's very, very intellectual, very smart, and he's very hardworking. In fact, if I had to rate his uh, presidential management style and skill to you know, be hardworking, I'd give him a 10 out of 10. That's really one of the only good things about him, though. So, what did James K. Polk actually do that was so important, you may ask? Well, he did a lot of things. He had four main plans for the United States, and they are as such. Number one, he wanted to acquire the Oregon Territory uh, in the Northwest from Great Britain. He was big on Manifest Destiny, remember that. Ugh. Two, he wanted to bring California into the United States. Again, Manifest Destiny. Double ugh. Number three, he wanted to establish an independent treasury that was going to clean 
clean up all the credit mess that had prevailed since Andrew Jackson, even though Polk was a big supporter of Jacksonian democracy, and was probably a bigger Jacksonian than even Andrew Jackson was. And four, he wanted to lower tariffs on imported goods because, you know, he just wanted to lower tariffs on imported goods. So the last two things are more economic issues that he wanted to solve, and he did that very effectively. All he did was just ask Congress for what he wanted, and they said, okay, yeah, sure, buddy, take it. But the first two were much more hard. What he did was he actually threatened war with Great Britain to gain the Oregon Territory, uh, and then he just kind of acquired California on the way. And then, that's not the half of it. The biggest part of the Polk administration was him acquiring the Southwest to the United States. That was all previously Mexican land. And when James K. Polk wanted it, Mexico was just kind of like, you know, no, we, we got it. We're, we're fine. We, we got our land. We got our territory. We're fine. But James K. Polk was not gonna do it that way and be like, okay, you got what you need. No, he, uh, he sent troops into the northern Mexican border near Texas and they fired. Uh, and then Mexico came back and fired as well because, you know, self-defense. And then Polk declared war. And the Mexican-American War lasted from 1846 to 1848. And the biggest battle between the United States and a foreign country after that was the Spanish-American War at the end of the 19th century. And there were many, many people in Congress who really liked what Polk was doing. They thought it was perfect for what the United States needed at that time. But there were some who didn't like it, and one of those people included future President Abraham Lincoln. Hooray! It's Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, he thought what Polk was doing was unconstitutional, and yeah, I give him credit for that. Cool. But then the war ends, America wins, and they acquire all this southwestern territory that was originally Mexico's. So yeah, that, that was good for the United States, but you know, not no, no, you don't do that. No. But yeah, that's basically the presidency of James K. Polk. This is an important announcement from the President Wiz himself. Oh, Jesus. I'm so sorry. I know it's the next day and I know I look terrible, but just coming in to just remind you, I was editing the video and I realized I completely forgot to put James K. Polk in a column. I didn't put him in amazing, good, okay, bad, or terrible. I just completely forgot that part. So, I guess I have to do it now. Um, I'm putting him in the bad column, as I explain, very intellectual, but just did not have good beliefs and was a really racist guy. So, no. Bad column you go. Alright, back, back on to the last minute. Can't believe I forgot to do that. That's like my whole purpose. Of doing this besides trying to give you information all right back on to the video enough of me when he leaves office early March of 1849 he is so worn out from doing all this stuff so he goes home to where he lives in the United States otherwise known as North Carolina early June June 15th because he's so worn out sick and tired he dies from cholera within 90 days of leaving the White House he's dead so that is the entire story of James K. Polk. Hope you enjoyed, and um, yeah, I'll be back with the next president, Zachary Taylor. The guy who ate cherries and drank milk and died because of it. So see you then. We've got a lot to cover here on The President Was. See you later.